Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks. Yeah. Good morning. How many of you have that on your phone? Pokemon Go, Pikachu. You played? I've played it. I've played it up to level six. I ran out of Pokeballs. I wasn't going to pay any money for this app, so that's when I stopped. It's an amazing app. Uh, we're talking about augmented reality here. This is the first really scalable, viral uh, consumer app where AR has made it out into the real world. It's amazing. It's, uh, it's high tech. There's obviously a lot of mapping and a lot of data behind it. Uh, it's also got people out of their houses, but sometimes, and out in the street, but sometimes into trouble. And you might have heard about this, people trying to catch Pokemon while driving, jumping out of their cars onto the highway, uh, trespassing on private property, and on a couple of occasions even getting mugged by some very intricate schemes. So, so there's a problem here. Okay? And that problem is a blind spot. There's a blind spot around technology that I want to talk about. And that blind spot is related to the fact that sometimes we end up focusing too narrowly on the things that we are building. There's an opposite of that. There's a bigger picture. And that bigger picture is about inclusion. That bigger picture is about understanding cause and effect. It's about understanding much, much more than just what you're building for that particular uh, innovation at that particular time. So what I want to talk to you today is about inclusion and about this new mindset, which I think is, is coming together, which is called inclusive innovation. And you might say, why, why me? Why me talking to a uh, tech crowd about this? So this is me from several years ago when I had a little more hair on my head. Uh, so I've been through the grind of uh, electrical engineering and programming uh, simulation background from IIT Delhi, University of Illinois, professor at University of Washington, chair of department. Uh, done two startup companies. I was an early uh, employee at a company which was sold for $850 million. I was not the founder. That's why I'm standing here. Um, <laughs> my second company uh, uh, was, was also a, a great experience. It was also acquired. I was the founder. It was acquired for much less than that, that first price. Um, as I look back here, I do realize this from a few years ago, and I'm talking about diversity, and there's clearly one type of diversity missing in, in this picture. But going through that experience of, of going through a company, uh, whether it's how to build a team, many of us do that here in this room, how to work with customers across the world. We had customers in Japan and Korea in the enterprise uh, software uh, and semiconductor business. Uh, we had a dev team in Santiago, Chile. So we built out this, this product and eventually got acquired. Great learning. And then after that, I was able to take that back to the University of Washington uh, in my new position as Vice uh, President for Innovation Strategy. And there I get to work with people from every discipline in the university, outside, across the world. We are building something new called the Global Innovation Exchange, which is a partnership with China. I head CoMotion, which is our collaborative innovation hub. And I get to meet amazing students like in this, in this maker space, which is part of uh, uh, the new excitement around, around prototyping and building. And we have a new incubator, Commotion Labs, focusing on VR, AR. So a lot of learning. But here's where I want to tell you something different. When I talk about innovation, it's not this part of my career where I got my best lessons from. It's also not from relationships and kids, which certainly teach us a lot and, and help us grow. But for me, uh, the, the biggest lessons of what inclusion is about and what this mindset of inclusive innovation is about came from a very different setting. Okay. And that's a squash quote for those of you who might uh, mistake that for racquetball. Never call, call a squash player a racquetball player, by the way. So uh, there's a big, big uh, disconnect between those two. Uh, for those of you who know squash, uh, you can appreciate when people talk about it uh, like playing three-dimensional chess in a closed room uh, while your heart rate is going up to 170 beats per minute. Okay. That's, that's really the the uh, milieu in which that, that game is occurring. So I was very fortunate, uh, amazing coaches here in town, uh, world-class coaches, amazing players to learn from. And that mindset, which is common to many competitive sports, which, which develops, is, is something that can be taken well beyond sport. And that's about managing risk. It's about learning from failure 
and very quickly learning from failure, maybe in a few points in the middle of a game. It's about humility. It's about suppressing your ego, but at the same time, it's about being confident and having belief. It's, it's a balance in between those two. And again, it's, it's about being in the moment, and it's about awareness. All of these traits translate well beyond uh, the, the, the sports arena and the squash court into something that I want to talk about, which is the mindset for inclusive innovation. It's humility, it's understanding, it's learning, and it's understanding in particular cause and effect, which sometimes we, we fail to do when we are looking at only one piece of the picture. We talk a lot about uh, disruption. If I played a, uh, a drinking game, counting the number of times you use that word, I'd probably be flat on the floor right now, right? So, so we use this word a lot for good reason. I mean, there, there is uh, an important role that disruption plays. It moves technology ahead in, 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 in leaps and bounds and, and changes uh, lives for many people. But it is disruption. It disrupts. And who does it disrupt? It can disrupt entire industries and corporations, people, careers, communities. And we tend to think of that as a side effect of progress, something that is not really in our control or is not our responsibility. It's, it's almost like collateral damage of, of uh, technology. There's a bigger view again. Again, it goes back to cause and effect. If we really take that in, in, into account and use our collective minds, to understand cause and effect before disruptions occur, that actually allows a much more fertile ground for building the next set of innovations. And that's, again, this, this concept of inclusive innovation, where it's not about slowing down what you're doing. It's about creating a team. It's understanding multiple disciplines. It's understanding cross-linkages. And it's bringing people who may make you uncomfortable, but who bring very different viewpoints uh, to your team. Innovation itself can come from many endeavors. Right? It's not limited to technology. Dancers are creative and innovative. So are first responders and firefighters, as are surgeons and, and doctors making split-second decisions which can, which can save lives. So innovation, creativity, comes at us from every angle, from many, many disciplines. Inclusive innovation is about taking all of these creative ideas, taking all these creative people and putting that together by breaking through the boundaries, which is very difficult because it's putting us outside our comfort zone. It's not about homogeneity. It's not about being more like what you are and creating products for people who look like you and, and, and feel like you and think like you. It's about really expanding your horizon and breaking your boundaries. And the way to do that is to have people who are experts in disciplines, but then have a way for these people to actually communicate, learn, manage, lead across all of these disciplines. Not easy to do, but that's the way that you need to do inclusive innovation so that your next innovation is really inclusive in, in every sense of the word. And this is happening. This is not uh, something that, that is out of the blue. And when, it, when, it, when these things come together, you see very, very amazing things happening. This is a team. Uh, from the University of Washington that, that worked on homelessness uh, and looking at what is, how do you go around trying to solve the homelessness problem in the, in the same mindset that uh, a hackathon might look at solving a, a cybersecurity problem. And so we had teams looking at homelessness. We had people walking and talking and learning about these challenges. And the winning team uh, came up with this job retention strategy. Not, not a job uh, creation strategy, but, but a job retention strategy. It's a mobile, uh, location-specific uh, design, including a technology and a program, to get people who are homeless to keep their jobs. It was not about getting the job. It was about retaining the job. That insight was actually created by a team member on that winning team who herself had been homeless. Okay, she had been homeless, and she was able to put the right understanding for what the product should be for that kind of community, for the youth, in particular the youth homeless around uh, in, a, in a specific area. So that's the kind of in innovation which happens when you include the right mindset, which need not be a technologist, but somebody who understands and can empathize with what you're building. Another example is uh, Partners for Our Children. Uh, this is related to our public um, um, welfare system for children in the state. 
it's a, uh, when people work through this system, there are many challenges. When you empathize with all the people who connect through this, with these this children, whether it's the biological parents, the foster parents, or the service providers, there are many situations which are heartbreaking and, and very difficult to, to understand why they happen. What this group has done, Partners for Children, is looking at scientific methods for uh, improving outcomes. Including a better mic? No. Including outcomes on um, how we can actually measure and leverage things from the software industry so that you can actually measure every interaction and get better outcomes in, in a non-technical field, in, in a, a social field for um, uh, foster children. These stories go on. Uh, Forefront is an organization. I don't know how many of you have heard of Forefront. Just okay. Thank you. We have one, one hand here. Okay, so uh, consider a faculty member, a very innovative faculty member, who had a personal tragedy. Her own husband uh, lost his life due to suicide. And instead of breaking down and, and giving up, she actually took that as an impetus to look at suicide prevention as her, as her uh, uh, life's goal and work together with many organizations, including Facebook, to come up with best practices around uh, looking at suicide prevention. Yeah. So this is another example of where you start with something which doesn't look like technology, but does it have an inclusive component? Absolutely. In town, uh, we are seeing a lot of this. Does anyone know what this is? This is the Nifty Cup from Path in, in town. Uh, think about it. it looks, it's a 50 cent. Uh, solution to a problem which is worldwide, which is trying to feed newborns when breastfeeding is not an option for multiple reasons. This simple looking device was actually had to be tested in the field and optimized over five years in three separate continents by multiple uh, collaborations and multiple organizations together to get to this stage. It's having an amazing social impact. Okay, another example of technologists working together, not necessarily with the highest technology, the most advanced technology, but the right technology for the, for the solution that you're trying to look at. Let's move to something which is closer to many of the folks in this, uh, in this audience. How many of you know what that is? WeChat, okay, from China, from Tencent. It's called a super app. Um, many tech companies in the U.S. are learning from this app, so innovation is flowing in the other direction as well. It's not just one-sided. Uh, and I saw this in action. I was in Chengdu, China, a uh, beautiful city. That's where the panda base is. Uh, speaking of incubators, you actually see real incubators with, with, with baby pandas. Uh, but I was there for a banquet, and the banquet had me being driven by my host to a restaurant. At the end of the meal, uh, let's just say the the host was not in a position to, to drive back home and drop me back home. I won't talk about my state. We, we, we won't go into that. Um, so question is, what do we do next? And I was sitting around with him, and he pulls out his phone and uh, presses a few buttons on WeChat. And a few minutes later, shows up, a person shows up on a foldable bicycle, not, not as nice as this bicycle, but a foldable small bicycle, uh, picks up the bicycle, puts it in the back of the car, takes the keys, gets into the uh, driver's seat, and starts driving. driving. Driving me and the host, drops me at the hotel, and later apparently drops the, um, uh, my host back home, gets out of the car, takes his bicycle, and moves up, leaves. So it's an on-demand designated driver. Okay, that's solving a very interesting um, social problem using technology as well, and understanding, obviously, culture and policy and risk and license and things like that. Staying on China, sometimes innovation comes at you from very different angles where you, where you least expect it. Uh, we were part of a delegation to Shenzhen. Shenzhen, as many of you know, is the manufacturing capital of the world, yeah, very, very high tech. We went in as Seattle, amazingly high tech, but also environmentally conscious, socially conscious, probably one of the centers of that movement in the whole world. And we sit there and get lectured by real estate and urban planners from Shenzhen saying, we've looked at South Lake Union. How come you didn't design for human scale and for the environment? We don't see any trees in South Lake Union. 
Again, this coming from Shenzhen, which you picture as you know, not necessarily the, the most beautiful place because of all the manufacturing. And the picture at the bottom is Shenzhen. Okay, so they've actually thought through this. And so the point of this is that sometimes the best ideas can come from places that you least expect. And you need to be open to those. And that's part of inclusive innovation. It's keeping your mind open and aware to ideas wherever they might come from. Because that's where the next new ideas are going to come from, from places where you least expect it. So as we are building all our technologies and becoming experts in our field, how do we create this, this mindset? How do we make sure that we're not blindsided or we stay just in, in our uh, frame of reference? Well, the way to think about that is you can be comfortable or you can be learning. Yeah, there's, there, there's two sides uh, to where you can be spending your time. And learning is, is like any other thing. It's a practice. It's a mindset. And we can all do that. And I think it's time that while we are experts in one field, we need to be become uh, adept at many other fields. Cause and effect is something we all need to understand. Okay, just because we are not responsible for some effect, and, or it doesn't fall in our domain or in our company, doesn't mean that we shouldn't be aware of what those effects could be, because you can be part of a broader solution. So understanding is a big piece of it. Communicating with people who are different from you, and not just you know, in terms of national origin or gender, but also who might be experts in areas you are not experts in or have opinions that are different from yours is something very, very important to do. And when I say communicate, it's more about listening rather than talking at them. This is another skill set that all of us can build as, as we are building our own, uh, our own products. And the best thing that you can learn by is by doing. So stepping out of what you're doing day to day to do something which is, again, outside your day-to-day -day expertise, and it could be volunteering, it could be learning a new skill, it could be, again, talking to someone who's an expert in a different area, that gives you that mindset. So it's really these three things together. It's, it's learning and understanding. It's um, communicating, especially listening to people different from, from yourself. And it's doing things which are new. If you, if you keep that mindset going, then hopefully the next time we have an AR app and I know there's a lot of people in this audience who can do a much better mock-up than this, so my apologies for the quality of the mock-up, especially because the map shows a landlocked region and there's a beach on the left. <laughs> but imagine if your next AR app, mapping app, you know, gave you all the coolness that you wanted from, from um, um, a Pokemon Go, it moved up levels, gave you cool virtual stuff, ha had lots of fun stuff happening, but at the same time, the people who are out and spending their time and energy manage to do something useful, like a beach cleanup. Okay, this, really, this is win-win for everyone. So thinking about things like that is, is, is also inclusive innovation. So uh, to, to, to uh, end, let's imagine the following. Let's imagine a scenario where expertise is coming from all disciplines. We're able to listen. We're able to bring in deep understanding. And then we can implement and solve issues that our world is facing. This is no longer going to be something nice to do or something uh, which is just useful. It's going to be imperative as our global challenges become more evident and more global. So again, picture that, 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 uh, that view where we have ideas which are igniting our imagination. We have innovations that are solving the world's problems. And we are doing this by cutting across all boundaries, disciplines, um, organizations, countries, cultures. That's the promise of inclusive innovation. If you think about it, all of us are innovators, every one of us, under the right conditions. And I think it's up to us to create those conditions. Let's do that, and let's be more inclusive in our innovation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Vikram. Thanks. Thanks, Vikram.